Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9. Today's teardown, a Philips fluorescent compact fluorescent light bulb. Now, this is back from the time when they actually started to get down to more sensible prices rather than something like 10 quid per bulb. Uh, so yeah, uh, standard fluorescent light, there's obviously the fluorescent light bulb hazards such as mercury, phosphorus, electronics. Yeah, you look at these in a term of an environmental term, maybe they're not such a good idea because you've got a lot more hazardous chemicals in these than you have a standard incandescent. And it's not all about energy usage when it comes to the environment. So how are we going to open this, you wonder? Well, clue. Mr. Dremel! But we're attacked from the bottom, so to minimise damage to the actual tube itself, because I don't want to be doing a mercury clean-up. So we're cut... And by the way, this one's dead. This one is God knows how many years old. Made in Europe, too, which is a nice little thing, because it's old enough to be. So, shall we start the Dremel up and start cutting? I reckon so. <laughs> Quite tough plastic. No, it's not potted. I wish I had goggles right now. The only thing I've got to protect me from flying plastic is my glasses. Are we almost there? Yes, we are. The Dremel's work is done and I'm covered in plastic. So a little bit of gentle coaxing. We can pop the bottom off and there's our actual links to the fluorescent light. Right in there. Now then, is there any way to use... Is that a connector? Hmm. It looks like one. No, it's not. If we look here... I would not recommend uh, people do this under the standard light of things, but this is basically what you've got. That's got a 400 volt potential, which would be fun to be zapped by. So, now we've just got to, well, get this out without damaging the tube. Because I really don't want to get mercury in everywhere. I also pull out my multimeter to test the actual power on that capacitor. And then we can lob this into a skip really hard when we finish, you see. Oh god. Um let's just um let me think. Do I have any wire clippers? Not really. Hmm. Hmm one thought about the situation.
Hmm. Well, I suppose we've got enough. We've got main transformer. Big old electrolyte, which is 2.2 UF and made by Nichicon. So, yeah, you can tell this is made in Europe. It's got proper named parts in it. The Philips ones might just be the ones to get. <coughs> Have we already gone through 15 minutes? I've got 15 minutes. I was wrong. Other parts, it's hard to tell, but yeah, if you've got decent caps in here, you know it's not going to be the inverter circuit that went pop, which is quite often what happens in these over the... So this thing has had a ridiculously long life, though. Quite interesting cracking them open, and they don't want you getting these things open, which is why Mr. Dremel was required. And obviously hit something red at some point, because there's actually... Ah, oh, it's a wire. One of the mains input wires. So yeah, mm, not really a lot. I can tell you how this circuit works because I'm not entirely sure. But it will basically boost the voltage to sort of lay it basically as a ballast. <coughs> and what ballast does is isolates the tube from the mains and gives a more constant current so this will work on a similar principle to a ballast because that's basically what the inverters are for fluorescent lights they limit the amount of current they can take because otherwise they just take it all and they also do that and of course it's done for a very clever means there's a big old start cap which would probably be the 2.2 UF you have a transformer which actually looks quite nicely wound little ferret thing transistors resistors that's another reason why to salvage these circuit boards while there are the hazards associated they are filled with useful components and anything filled with useful components is worth salvaging so yeah um, I'll figure out how to get the rest of this apart with just the limited tools I have hang on hmm Probably that's probably soldered in, isn't it? That would be about how they'd do it, indeed it would. Or would it? Hang on a minute. They don't look like they're oh, soldered in. No, they're not. They're just plugged in. All this time I was thinking I couldn't get it open. Look at that, that tube is burnt out alright. It's all blackened inside. But yeah, it's all plugged in. That's fantastic. Crappy little paperboard, sadly, which is a bit of a damper, bearing in mind this has got mains potential going through it for areas. There's into the actual fluorescent tube itself, each end, because it's a heated filament to each end. I could go into how fluorescent lights work, and in fact will, because in this case, uh, for white fluorescent lights, it's like an argon gas of a specific type of phosphor and as the electrons go through they energize energize it and crash into other ones which can knock the electrons off and also another theory is as they jump between the areas they emit energy as you ultraviolet light and then the phosphorus transfers it to visible light but that's the basics of how fluorescent light works, really basic level, but hmm. Quite interesting if you ask me. Shall we measure the voltage across that big ass cap and see if there's actually anything in there or if it's all dead? Because I did plug it in yesterday to test it. It was the yesterday or the day before or something, it would probably be dead by now. That's 400 volts did it say on it? Something like that. Stay there multimeter. Negative, that'll be where it goes to. Excellent, it's safe to touch. Da, 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 da. Trust me, I would not be still holding that if it wasn't safe to touch. I'd rather test it with a multimeter. But actually, all in all, apart from the cheap crappy board with minimal spacing between the well, mains potential bits, in fact that's all your spacing between them. Not actually bad construction design, bearing in mind these are actually limited for space. 
you do have some more larger space between the pins of the ones which are connected. So all in all, not that bad of a construction. It's actually relatively good when you consider all what it has to go through. But the type of PCB is not so good. Vulnerable to uh, combusting. And when you've got potentials which can actually lead to combustion, you probably want to use something closer to the fiberglass paper hybrid or the fiberglass together because fiberglass does not easily burn. It gets rid of the sawdust. Interesting experience nonetheless. And as I always say, thanks for watching and I hope you found this rather interesting and informative. Quite nice little circuit boards these are, they're quite neat, that's why I always save them. That's one good thing about these, they always have good parts to save. Thanks for watching.